Yeah, I'm ready. Good evening. This is ISC 461. We will present uh, time value of money, and this is um, group number one. So, um, like uh, Professor said, we're discussing uh, time value money. And if I asked you guys, you know, what is the time value money? It's kind of a weird question because you know, money and time shouldn't really be changing. We're going to address this issue in our presentation today. Uh, my colleagues and I are uh, this is Sheldon Kwok, Victor Bouchang, and Sarah McGregor, and I'm Madeline, and the schedule for today will be looking at some of this. We will first, I'll cover the introduction, uh, we'll talk about the concept and the general idea behind what time value is. Next, we'll, uh, Sheldon will talk about interest and compounding it. Uh, lastly, we'll kind of like mix the last two together and we'll close on a note of annuity, uh, which is a uniform series of cash flows. This will be introduced by Sarah and uh, closed out by uh, Victor. So let's get to it. Time value of money. Right. Um, you think of money as a counter or like as an amount, it shouldn't really change, right? Because you know it'd be a kind of crappy counter if the amount it was counting always changed. So this is, you know, why would why is this amount versus value? What does this say? If you if I asked you, would you want hundred dollars now or hundred dollars later? Intrinsically, most people would say I want hundred dollars now. So there's an inherent like idea that money now is worth more than money later. So what exactly is this? Um, and the internet example uses $10,000, and for simplicity's sake, we'll just keep with $10,000. So $10,000 now for $10,000, what is the difference between $10,000 now and $10,000 in three years? And the answer is three years. And this brings this idea of, you know, time is money. And in order to put a value on how much time is important, you have to look at uh, this idea of interest, uh, like rate. There's many ways you can make money off of your money over time, and one way to do it is to just rent it out like a car. Like you lease a car out, you will, you know, you pay money, you get a car, and then at the end, you give the car back. So if you rent someone your money, you charge them uh, like how much you want to charge them for the rent. At the end of the time, you get your money back plus rent. So this can be seen in this example where it's, uh, you know, at the start you get ten thousand dollars, and you get ten thousand plus interest or rent. Here you get. 10,000 and 10,000 less rent. So what's the difference? If you look at it um, in at 4.5 percent, like the uh, example on the internet uses, you uh, end up with option. If you choose option B and you choose to get your money later, what actually happens is you have $10,000. It's like saying you invested X amount of dollars and got $10,000 at the end. This would be like saying you got you invested $8,796.97 here and got interest here. Conversely, if you had chosen option A and chosen your money to get your money now, you would get uh, $10,000 plus whatever money you rented here. This concept can be also be transferred to annuity, where the difference is you get a payment at one, at period one, right? You don't get to charge interest. You don't get to charge rent over this period because you don't have it. If you get uh, interest on two, you can only charge interest rent on this portion. So this idea is like annuities is you only get interest on subsequent uh, periods. So. With that said, I'll pass it over to Sheldon, who will talk about uh, interest. Right. So um, first, I guess I would like to start off with introducing just a few simple definitions. Um, interest uh, over here is the rent charge for the use of borrowed money, as Matt said earlier. Um, so I guess we might ask, why do we want interest? Um, like Alton Al said, time is money. And when, let's say, you borrow money from the bank, that means the bank is unable to use the money that you just borrowed, and therefore the bank would like some compensation for not having the ability to use the money. So that's why we, uh, they charge interest. Um, so yeah, so this can also be represented by that concept of an opportunity cost. Um, that is the cost of the next best um, op option you choose when making a decision. So here's a comic on the right that illustrates this. So. Uh, this, gr this girl is asking, oh, so why why don't you like fill up at the gas station, like here, like five minutes away, and it's cheaper? And the guy says, because the penny saved is a penny earned. So, um, in his calculations, he realizes that when you drive to the cheaper gas station, you're actually using up more gas, um, and then you'd actually lose money than by saving maybe like five, two or five cents by shopping at the cheaper gas station. So that's the opportunity cost of that scenario. And uh, another definition, um, the interest rate, that is a pure mathematical number. 
represented by a percentage that shows um, the interest charge over a period of time. So um, here I have a few uh, simple examples for interest. Uh, let's assume the rate is very generous, 50%, as used in this example. Uh, and the period is one year for each um, interest compound. So in the simple interest uh, example, um, you, uh, you don't compound, you just get interest based off of your principal, which in this case is $100. So at the end of the first year, you get 50% of your principal, Fifty dollars, and at the end of the second year, you get fifty percent of your principal, so another fifty dollars. So in this case, you don't really like gain a lot more money. But uh, in the compounding interest scenario, you uh, your interest uh, you gain interest based off of um, how much money you have at the end of each period. So uh, let's start again at year one. You get fifty dollars based off of one hundred dollars um, from the initial, and at the end of year two you actually get $75 based off the initial because um, at the end of year one, you gain $150 and you're taking 50% of that, so that's $75. So now you have a total of $225. Um, so here uh, is the mathematical representation uh, in order to calculate interest. F is the equivalent future value, P is the present value, I is the interest and n is the number of periods. Um, so in this comic here, a uh, person's kind of confused, like, oh, like, what's, what's compounding? Um, so let's say we have a 2% interest with uh, $1,000 present value, and this person uh, puts it in their computer and gets the value of $1,219. Um, so here, I did out the math to check to see if I did it correctly. So we have P is 100, uh, 1,000, I is 2%, which is also 0 0.02, and the period, there's 10 periods for 10 years, and you just plug that into the calculator, and you get uh, $1,218.99, so basically 12.19, and the author did it correct. So yeah, so compound interest is not some magical force that it's difficult to understand. Um, so, uh, you can also compound your interest uh, continuously. So instead of like uh, easy to visualize, understand intervals of like monthly, daily, or like annually, um, you can compound uh, as the time approaches infinity. So it's like instantaneously compounding. Um, so this is defined by this equation here. Uh, as for f and p, uh, f is the future value, p is the present value. And then here we have E, the exponential factor, and then we have R, which is the rate, and T, which is the number of periods. So we, uh, we use the same number from before, uh, where the interest rate is 2%, and uh, the present value is 1,000, and just plug it in there uh, ten, over 10 periods, and you get $1,221. So that's like slightly more than $1,219 but every dollar counts. And in scenarios where you're dealing with large amounts of money, you can make more money from uh, compounding continuously. And here's just a small joke. Um, the E is telling the pi, oh sure, everybody loves pi, but sooner or later their interest converges on me. Um, and with that, I'd like to hand it off. And Sarah will talk about annuities. Okay, so what are annuities? Basically what they are is a financial uh, product that is designed to pay out a steady amount of cash over time. So if you it's more like a car payment or a depositing savings account. So you want like two hundred dollars every month into the account. You can you can use that value to increase your your value at the end of a certain amount of time. Here are the equations uh, from the front of our textbook. Here's the series of uh, worth factor, which will be used to find the equivalent um, the equivalent present value. So that there are different types of annuity. There's ordinary annuity, ordinary annuity where payments made at the end of the period, and here is the equation with A being the, the annuity value, and then P being the present value, and N, and N is the number of periods, and I is the percent interest. Then there's annuity due, where payments are made at the beginning of each period, like rent payments, and then there's fixed annuities that are annuities with fixed payments, as it says, which is, and the, there's a predetermined return from the insurance company or the bank, whatever you're uh, transferring money to. And then there are variable annuities, where it's 
the benefits are periodic payments, death benefits, and tax deferment. And the amount of money paid out of every period varies. So you can put in $200, and sometimes you get up 50 to 75 or $80, depending on the age. So I'll pass it over to Mr. Casey to give examples of factors. Um, when we're looking at unique uh, uh, annuities, there are four bullet factors that um, impact the uh, present, future, and by how much you're going to be uh, regularly inputting, or what, what the amount you're going to be regularly inputting. And these are the present worth factor, uh, the capital recovery factor, compound amount factor, and sinking fund factor. Uh, factor. Um, so the series present worth factor is a, the factor that allows us to um, calculate from knowing how much we regularly input into um, the annuity, how much the present value of the annuity is. And um, so an example would be, um, we want to know how much we need to invest at present to have uh, an annuity of $1,000 a year for five years, um, knowing that the interest uh, is 10% per year. So in this case, our annuity is $50,000. Um, our interest rate is 10% and our period is 5. And by plugging um, these values into the formula that we took from the textbook, uh, we find that the present value would be 189539 um, Another factor is the capital recovery factor. Um, the capital recovery factor is used to find out um, how much um, we would regularly deposit or withdraw in an annuity to match present uh, value, or also um, how many periods we would want to, uh, we would need to pay to complete the annuity. Um, so an example would be, in this case, we want to find out how many years it will take to uh, empty an account. Uh, we withdraw $1,000 each year starting from $10,000 capital, and um, the interest rate is 10%. So in this case, our present value is $10,000, our annuity is $1,000, and our interest rate is 5%. Um, so in this case, it's hard to solve for N, but by looking into the um, compound interest tables, we are able to find that um, the period, it would, it would require 14 periods to, um, uh, well, it's called, uh, empty the account. Um, then there's the series compound amount factor. Um, the, series amount compo uh, the series compound amount factor is used to find out um, the future value of an annuity. Um, it's very similar to the um, series present worth factor, except um, you factor out the uh, 1 plus i to the power of n, which is the uh, equivalent of uh, calculating the present value. Uh, yeah, uh, and so an example would be, imagine that you are planning for your retirement. Um, you expect to retire in uh, 35 years, so you save around, uh, you save $500 per month with 8% interest per year. Um, question is, how much would you have when you retire? And by plugging in these values into the equation, we get $1,146,941. Uh, finally, we have the sinking fund factor. Uh, the sinking fund factor is actually the inverse of the series compound amount factor. Um, it allows us to um, find out how much to deposit or withdraw in the annuity to match the future value. Um, for example, we want to find out how much we should deposit into an account in order to save up $6,000 in five years with an interest rate of 4%. So in this case, our future value is $60,000, our period is 5, and um, our interest rate is 10%. And by plugging these values into the formula, we find $9,828 per year. Um, Sarah is going to conclude our presentation. Yeah, just to conclude, uh, just to review what we learned, that interest is the, uh, the rent charge for the use of borrowed money, so it can increase the amount of money when you put it into a fund. Like, uh, like Sean gave the example of. And then you is people payments over time, which can also increase the value of your money uh, in the future. And then um, as we've learned, it's always better to 